Ah, spooky high school. The sweetest years of our lives. Back then, we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. And we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge, the monster prom. I remember clearly, three weeks were left and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our six most charismatic classmates. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19. A sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Damien LaVey, 21. A fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love for fire. Scott Howell, 21. A werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Liam DeLioncourt, 400. A hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hit that he was truly a lovable dork. Polly Geist, 22. A party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. And Vera Oberlin, 23. A mean, self-made gorgon with a merciless sense of business. It was clear it had to be one of them, but who? We only had three weeks to choose our prom date, and even more daunting, we only had three weeks to woo them and conquer their heart. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. Welcome to Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever. All mines are rotten, but they are rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more. We're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose what kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever, trademark, will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character stats. This way, each of you will start by having stats that better reflect your true selves. Let's start! If you could put a curse on your worst enemy, what would it do? You can't rely on the effectiveness of a curse. I prefer to take care of my enemies the old-fashioned way, by exposing them to unsafe doses of radiation over the course of several years. If you had to have sex with an animal, which animal would it be? A great white shark. If I have to fuck an animal, let's at least make it a story worth telling. You find a genie in a bottle. You can ask for whatever you want. What do you ask for? I don't ask for anything. I drink the genie from the bottle. I can grant my own wishes. That day, you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. I guess some people just want to watch the world burn by skipping class and hanging out in the bathrooms. You give zero shits, but you gain two boldness. After, you're counting and recounting your money, hoping to find an extra dollar, when suddenly... Hey, Brian, look, look here, look what I have. Isn't it shiny? Scott holds aloft a roll of duct tape which you concede is indeed shiny. Listen, I'm not saying that we tied up Crazy Martin, the werebear janitor. I'm just saying this duct tape is crazy strong. And if you wanted to wreak some havoc on the school, Crazy Martin might be a little tied up. Think the triple goddess. We've spent months tracking that. Our thing? So cool, right? We have a thing, and it's our thing. And it's the best thing, and it's ours. You fools. That's the duct tape of retribution. It's the only adhesive that can hold Balthazar the Destroyer, whom we must detain in order to save the world. Oh, well, saving the world is good. I just liked it because it was a cool, shiny thing. You can have it. No, oh, wait, Scott. They're probably just making that shit up because they want to take the cool thing from us. Balthazar the Destroyer? Obviously fake. Why have I never heard of him? We had a three-hour-long lecture on Balthazar the Destroyer in Homeroom yesterday. You're right, Damien. They must be lying. I think we would have remembered that. You were at sports practice, and Damien was asleep at his desk. After we heard about the threat Bathazar posed, we took it upon ourselves to journey deep into the dungeons of Hullis Ma 
to bring back the holy duct tape of retribution, only to discover it already gone. Oh, the dungeon of Hola's Ma. That's where we were. We took a wrong turn on our way to English curses and got totally lost. Somehow we were in some kind of maze. Anyway, we saw that sick tape and thought we might as well take it. Now it's fucking ours and you can't have it. Ugh. Could you be any more oblivious? Hand over the tape or we'll be forced to use force to take it by force. Yikes. Looks like this situation is getting out of control. You better step in before someone or some duct tape gets hurt. Scott, you don't really care about that duct tape, right? You just like having a cool shiny thing. But watch me use my sweet negotiation skills to get, wait for it, two cool shiny things. Seriously? We said we needed a magic artifact to save the world from the likes of Balthazar and you're, you're making us barter for it? God, you guys really are pathetic. The Coven leader, Joy, you're like 90% sure her name is. Although, they always kind of feel like one person to you. Rummages around in her pockets before withdrawing two shiny things. Here, here are two shiny things. A broken glow stick from the last Dark Arts Con we attended. And the ceremonial dagger. Damn, that is one nice looking dagger. I'm into it. What kind of fierce quest did you have to complete to get a hold of that baby? Actually, I just bought it from a dark arts and craft store. You bought it? At a store? That's even more amazing! Do you know how hard it is to go to a store and buy the thing you're supposed to? Without losing the money? Or eating the money? Or thinking that you lost the money and finding out that you ate the money? How have you not been expelled yet? Do we have a trade or not? Yes! Two shiny things! Hooray! The trade is swiftly made and the coven leaves to go save the world or whatever. The important thing is that Scott and Damien are now in the possession of two shiny things. And from the equally shiny smile Scott is flashing you, you're thinking that you might be in possession of a prom date. You gain two boldness and one fun. Listen, Brian, you can totally sit with us. I just hope you didn't bring a gun to a bazooka fight. Yeah, we're showing off our best flasks. Well, not the best flask exactly, but the best contents. Good God, are literal, actual flasks of alcohol openly allowed in the school cafeteria? Are there no rules? Apparently not, because Polly starts setting a series of flasks down on the table. Okay, so this is beer, my WC wine, Whiskey, ethyl alcohol, the soul of an infant. Ah, weak. This is radioactive absinthe. This is fire. And this is literal poor life choices. Okay, but this one has another smaller flask inside. It's the ultimate flask. They could probably go on like this for goddamn ever. Maybe you can cut in with the craziest thing of all. But think carefully about whom you want to impress with your flask contents. Get ready for the most hardcore badass thing. This flask contains an ancient genie that grants you three wishes, but I'm totally drinking it because I don't give a fuck. I grant my own damn wishes. Yeah, you're right. Hardcore. So hardcore. You could ask for anything. Well, power, immortality? A free pass for teachers to ignore bad behavior forever and let you do whatever the fuck you want without suspension? But instead, you're just gonna drink the genie? It's like you've drunk from my poor life choices flask. And I love it. I didn't even know you could drink a genie. You and Damien pop open the flask and drink the genie together. It's definitely just water, but Damien seems to drink so much alcohol and energy drinks that he's literally forgotten what water tastes like. Normally you'd say that couldn't possibly be healthy, but fuck it, he's a demon from hell. He can probably do whatever. What a glorious bonding experience. That day during recess, you start a half hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself. 
But who cares? It's a rat party. You gain two fun. Later, you're minding your own business, which soon proves to be difficult, when you notice Damien and Scott in the vicinity, in the middle of some hot, sweaty arm wrestling. Unfortunately, you can't enjoy it for very long since stupid strong Scott beats Damien in no time, but it seems like you're not the only one mad at the outcome of this situation. This is so unfair! That one didn't count, Scott. We should arm wrestle, but with guns. But bro, I've got these two guns already. And by guns, I mean my big arm muscles, which, just to be clear, are not real guns. But still, shut up, I will murder you. No, 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 no. Arm wrestling proves nothing. See who's the very best. We should, uh, hmm. We should scream at a huge rock until it breaks just because of our pure rage and awesomeness. Or we should subdue a tiger with a scary and manly look. Bro. Now you're just quoting stuff from yesterday's episode of Ultimate Warriors of Mount Awesome. Face it, bro. I'm the Ultimate Warrior. No! Arm wrestling doesn't mean shit! Hey you, Brian. Not because arm wrestling isn't going my way, but I've just decided you should settle this tie by proposing a way to decide who the real Ultimate Warrior is around here. Uh, whoever can punch the sun in the face. I don't know, bro. Doesn't even seem possible. I'm fucking in! I'm gonna punch that stupid sun right in the face. And I'm gonna be the very best. Anyway, I wanted to punch the sun already. That motherfucker thinks he's more fiery than me. Are you sure about that, Damien? Isn't the sun like a big ball of gas without any real face on it? That's what a little sun-fearing loser would say. Also, uh... How do you plan to get there to punch it in its face anyway? The sun is like, super far, Damien. No, no, it's like, super, super, super far. I'm like, 86% sure you can't get there with a the ladder. Yeah, Scott, I know, I'm not an idiot. That's why I'll be using, hmm, a really tall ladder. Okay, it seems the two of you will need to work out the specifics on that later. Nah, bros, I'm out. This plan doesn't sound very nice, nor very possible. Also, the son and I are pen pals. What? Huh. I knew good boy Scott wasn't fierce enough to punch the sun in its face. But me, I'm Damien fucking LeVay. And I will punch the sun in its fucking face. Because of all the bad things it's done, like UV radiation and shit. But, but mostly because of pure gratuitous violence, and because I want to become the ultimate warrior no matter what. Are you free for the next few weeks, Brian? I'll be needing your smarts to come up with a good plan for not dying while punching the sun. I hope you're ready for some wacky misadventures that will strengthen our bonds, maybe even into the love zone. Fuck yeah, you're ready for that. It's punching the fucking sun time. Oh, and you gain two creativity and one boldness. That day you skip class just to hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. On the way there, you run into Mamimi, the Oni girl. She offers you some of her weird Japanese energy drink. You take a sip. It tastes crazy as hell. You need to check the contents of this shit. Guarana seed extract, benzoic acid, 50 milligrams of caffeine, and 100 milligrams of boldness? Well, it wasn't bad at all. You gain two boldness, thank Mamimi, and proceed to the bathrooms. Later, you see Damien packing a bag. I'm going away for the weekend to detention. I have fucking detention again. Why? Just because I rigged the teacher's lounge door with booby traps that poured selkie piss on whoever opened it. I mean, I didn't even set anything on fire this time. Let me spill the tea. The school is strict as fuck. Anyway, just brainstorming some ways to keep things entertaining beyond fucking ditching. Do it. Do it. Just fucking ditch. Do it. Damn, why didn't I think of that? I mean, I just did, but I didn't consider it as a serious option. If I skip detention, what are they going to do? Give me detention? I can do anything. Make a bonfire out of the desk, jerk off into the potions, and I'll just skip detention forever and wreak as much havoc as I want. Fuck yeah, havoc! Well, you may have created a monster, but at least he's your monster. You gain two smarts and one boldness.
You sit down to enjoy a nice, normal meal at the spooky high cafeteria as usual. <laughs> LOL, JK. Something fucked up is always going on here. That today is no different. Oh, hello, Brian. Did you want to come sit with us and our imaginary friend? No one else is here. Their imaginary friend roars, and the whole cafeteria shakes. Okay, Brian. You have some smarts. You're probably going to figure this out pretty quickly. Why do we have a wild beast under our table? Why don't you take a guess? He's asking you to guess because we totally forgot our plan. Scott! No, we didn't. Shut up. We're going to teach you piano. Or maybe the saxophone. I lost my notes. No worries. No notes needed. You know exactly what they should do with this wild beast. It's obvious he brought such a beast to the kitchen to turn it into the next MasterChef champion so you can split the big MasterChef cast prize. What a kick-ass idea! Which was obviously ours. You're right, that was our idea. Hooray, we're geniuses. And I have just what we need here. Training montage music. Suddenly you start a training montage in which the three of you try to teach cooking to the wild beast. You suck at it since you're not big chefs yourselves. And also because it's a wild beast. And it keeps on devouring people and wreaking havoc. But it is quite an epic training montage. Afterwards, you're all sitting excited in front of a portable TV. The Monster Chef show is about to start. You're holding cute, supportive signs, and you even got yourself a custom-made t-shirt of the Wild Beast. Whoa, this is the big day! Also, how is it that we trained the Wild Beast, and it's now on the show if it's still known and the cafeteria time hasn't ended? Shh, Scott. Time works in mysterious ways when it comes to training montages. Okay, boys. I only hope it isn't a souffle challenge. We know the Wild Beast isn't good at souffles. The Wild Beast isn't good at anything aside from devouring people and wreaking havoc. You quietly watch the show. The challenge is Beef Wellington. Fuck yeah, no souffle! Not so surprisingly, once the challenge begins, the Wild Beast just starts to devour other contestants and destroys the show set. You see the judges screaming, Who the fuck let a Wild Beast enter the competition? The Wild Beast is disqualified. Well, I guess that's it. We might not have won the cash prize, but we won the most valuable prizes. The prize of laughing at our Wild Beast, fucking up everything on the Monster Chef set, which is a memory we will cherish forever. Is Damien ready to cherish memories that includes you? Wow-wee! That day during recess, you start a half-hour raid that goes full crazy. You spot one, the small magical Latino cat, who seems a bit sad. He explains to you that he's worried people are so used to calling him one, the small magical Latino cat, that now everyone defines him only by his size, magicality, ethnicity, and species. He's more than that. You correct him. You don't see him in such simplistic terms and convenient definitions. It's just that there are around 23 other different wands at this school, so adding all that to his name is quite necessary. You tell him you'll never forget about him, and the crazy adventures you both lived together in Monster Prom's prequel, Monster Middle School. You have a great time remembering those crazy stories. You gain two fun. You're wondering if anyone is going to try to punch the sun anytime soon, when suddenly... Sup, Brian, you sun punch helping motherfucker. You ready to help me punch the sun? Heck yeah! It's what you were born to do, or something. So, I did some research, and it turns out that the sun is pretty fucking far from Earth. Who would have ever guessed the shocking revelation? In fact, it seems like the sun is closer to space than Earth, so to get there, we're going to need a spaceship. The only question is where to get one of those things. Go to the most authoritative of all sources, WikiHow. Wiki... how? Is that like WikiWi, the premier resource for existential crises? Because that website is incoherent listicle shit. Damien pulls out his phone and begins to type. How to romance a spaceship in 12 days or less. How to eat an entire spaceship. Here we go. How to build a spaceship. Look at all the stuff we need. A welding torch? Titanium alloy? Lithium batteries and fuel cells? I already own all of that! I just need to dismantle my antique bomb collection and we'll be good to go. To the sun. This spaceship is going to be built in no time. 
Look out, son, you smug motherfucking nearly perfect sphere of hot plasma. Get ready to get that magnetic field you call a face punched. Does the sun call its magnetic field a face? Whatever. It's getting punched either way. You gain two boldness and one fun. That day you skip class, intending to spend the term in the bathrooms. But you encounter three wild hyenas on the way there. Who the fuck runs security here? Anyway, you subdue them with the help of a hair comb. God bless the monster scouts and all the idiotic scenarios they prepared you for. By the time you get to the bathrooms, you've totally gained two boldness. One tow truck, two tons of rocket fuel, and three gallons of whiskey later, you and Damien are ready to fly to space and punch the sun. Looks like everything's packed. I've got the beef jerky sandwiches, my sun punching gloves, and I even renamed the ship. You see that Damien has painted SS Fuck on the side of the rocket in blood. Alright son, you ready to get punched? Too bad because we're coming to stop right there, evildoer. Oh great, it's the good grade brigade come to shit in the punch bowl. What do you nerds want? To put an end to your nefarious scheme, of course. We'll admit to being a bit surprised that a mere secondary character turned out to be this season's big bad. Secondary? Character? But to fly into space itself intent on delivering a deadly blow to the very sun, giver of life, banisher of darkness. It is a plan truly befitting the climax of our mid-season arc. You must be stopped. What the dog dick are you guys talking about? I just want to punch the sun because the sun is dumb. And to prove to Scott that I'm the ultimate warrior. We are not fooled. We know your true motives, and we will not rest until you are defeated. I do not have time for this shit. Brian, can you get rid of these dweebs? I'd do it, but the police say I've already exceeded my murder quota for the week. <sighs> no way are you letting these witches get between you and your red spicy man crush. But what to do? No, you fools! The sun was the big bad all along. What? The sun? You're saying it was the big bad the entire time? It's unbelievable, and yet somehow it makes perfect sense. Yes, of course. Remember our beach trip last year? We woke up with burns all over our bodies and couldn't fathom which big bad was responsible. Don't you see? They were sunburns. Burns from the sun. How could we have been so blind? Certainly not from looking at the sun. For if anything, we've not been looking hard enough. Forgive us, Damien. We misjudged you. We thought you were the big bad, but you are only a red herring. I am not a red herring. I am a red man. You managed to distract Damien from murdering the Coven by setting a bunch of rocket fuel on fire. You'll have to get some more before you can launch, but whatever. You gain two fun and one smarts. Strange. You could have sworn Polly and Damien were at this table when you picked it. Psst. Hey, loser! Down here! It's us! Polly and Damien! Hiding under this table for totally innocent reasons! A ferocious roar sounds from the doors of the cafeteria. Crazy Martin the Werebear Janitor is here, and he's looking for someone. Oh, shit, he's here! Why is he after us anyway? I think what we did really falls more under federal jurisdiction. International law, more like. Those munchkins were Canadian citizens. Now that you mention it, I think we might actually have to face a war crimes tribunal. Worth it though, right? Oh, totally. As long as we can get away from Buzzkill the Bear over there. Hide behind diplomatic immunity. I mean, you're both princes of hell, right? Not me! I'm not! I'm not even a princess of hell! Guess you should have thought of that before being born a commoner, huh? I wasn't born, Damien. I was died. Well, die better next time. I'll try to keep that in mind when I'm being tried at fairy tale court for negligent munchkin side. Great. Let me know how it goes. I'm off to crush an orphanage and get away with it because I'm royalty. Later. After the orphanage crushing, Damien takes you out for ice cream. Sweet. Literally. That day you visit the bathrooms to take a number two. Don't worry, there won't be an illustration for that specific moment. Thing is, you make one of the boldest decisions in your life. You don't put paper on the toilet seat before using it. Look at you, you crazy bastard. 
You gain two boldness and probably one Staphylococcus with a slight chance of STD. The rocket's on the launch pad. You've got your lucky lunchbox. You've sobered up enough to at least see the cockpit controls. Everything's ready, but for some reason Damien's hanging back. What's the matter? You thought he was dying to go punch the sun. I do want to punch the sun. I've never wanted to punch a giant ball of burning plasma so much in my life. But I... It's hard for me to say this. But I'm wondering if this is actually such a great idea. I mean, sure, I've punched a lot of things. Monster trucks. Liam. An active volcano that pissed me off. But the sun... I mean, the sun's got to be at least twice as big as a volcano. Maybe even three times. What if... What if I can't do it? What kind of ultimate warrior will I be if I can't even punch one lousy sun? This is stupid. I should just go back to punching monster trucks and Liam, like I always have. You know, when you really think about it, maybe sending Damien on a rocket straight to the sun is sort of a bad idea. But you can't stand to see him like this. No, you've got to give him some killer advice for guaranteed sun punching. To punch the sun, you must first surrender your ego. We should beg the internet for advice. I'll check my phone. You post on r slash punch the sun asking for advice and receive a response moments later from the Slayer. What the fuck are you doing here? That's right, Beelzebutt Munch. I saw your Reddit post and I'm here to, let me guess, stop me once and for all. Normally, yes, but it seems you and I share a common enemy. The sun? Yes, the sun. Haven't you wondered why I'm always wearing this leather hoodie? Because you're a enormous goddamn loser? Because I burn super easily, okay? The sun is out to get me, and I, for one, think it's high time the fucker got punched. Now you're speaking my language. My language only has one word, and that word is punch. Well, I'm here to help. And the best way I know to help you is with some sage advice. Perhaps you have considered punching the sun. Maybe you've even considered punching it very hard. But Damien, have you considered punching the sun very, very hard? That is the most brilliant thing I have ever heard. I know, right? Just gotta make sure it works. What do you mean you... Damien suddenly punches the Slayer so hard, she does six backflips in midair before hitting the ground. Haha, <laughs> it works! Thanks, Slayer. Punching you has given me the confidence I needed to take on the sun. Come back here, you unholy turd. I'll show you how to punch very, very hard. But the Slayer's rage falls on deaf ears. Damien has already locked himself in his rocket ship, and it looks like he's ready to do something very dumb. Very dumb and very, very sexy. You gain two fun and one charm. After so much plotting against the sun, you think you and Damien have bonded enough to punch Prom in the face too. Prom? No way. I have a son to punch, my noob. I'm very grateful and shit, but while you're dancing and fucking around on Prom, Damien fucking LeVay will be in motherfucking space. But hey, if I don't die in space thanks to our stupid plan, we could have a date to celebrate my victory or something. Anyway, I'm out to punch the sun. Wish me luck, noob. He has a point. And so, prom night arrives. You have a great time by yourself, dancing with your friends and setting stuff on fire as a way of wishing Damien luck. It's great, but you're a bit worried. A mission to the very sun in order to punch it doesn't seem like the brightest plan ever. He could even die. And so, when dawn comes, you go to a hill you designated as the landing point and you just wait, rooting for Damien. You start to really worry when suddenly you see something in the sky. It's Damien's space capsule! And so, you gloriously reunite. Damien is showing you his sexy red bare chest under his conveniently torn down spacesuit. He goes to you ecstatic by his great victory, and he receives you with a hot embrace, while you're graciously sunbathed reluctantly by the morning sun. Damien tells you about his adventure in space, and it's the best after-prom morning ever, even if you didn't spend the night together. And you know what? In the end, he punches you in your face. With his face. Brian, most likely to be a sleeper agent just waiting for the code word. Damien's quote. 
Is actual fire an acceptable option for a quote? Those three weeks were maybe the most epic and absurd weeks of our lives. After the monster prom, we kept on living our lives, falling in love, battling for friendships, and learning about who we were and who we could be. And you know what? Like it always does, life happened. And it was wonderful. Damien loved fire to the very end. Unfortunately, that wasn't a super legal affair, and he ended up in prison for arson. Fortunately, prison was flammable. Scott turned out to be a genius and became the most renowned mathematician in the country. JK, he became an athlete. Duh. He's still a bit of a simpleton, but as lovable and good-hearted as ever. Vera realized she was a character in a video game, which infuriated her. She spent her life making connections and building power because she's not part of the game, she plays the game. So be careful, maybe now she's the one pulling your strings. For those three weeks, the Monster Prom seemed larger than life, and then it was gone just like that. The battle for Monster Prom might have ended then, but there were plenty of battles left in that war called youth. But once again, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start.